Not me waking up nearly 3 a.m. so I can watch this freaking show. Hey, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello. I'm Melissa. So like I said, your girl is waking up mad, mad early because it drops my time at 3 a.m. And I just wanted to make sure that I'm able to watch and binge all four episodes and react to it right here with you. So because of my sleep deprivation, if you're actually enjoying the content, please do me a favor and like this video because liking the video really helps push the visibility of the video and that way we can grow the community and maybe your girl can get to 1K subscribers this year. I don't know. I can't do it without your help, but I still appreciate it. But it has been over two years since the last season of Bridgerton. And there's been many factors of why that happened because of all the strikes and this and that. And I'm trying to forget about the fact that we have to wait an entire month until we can see the rest of the season, but I digress. So I am excited to check this out. I mean, I have to be right. I woke up at 3 a.m. to watch this show. I have been covering Bridgerton ever since the first season dropped, so I actually have an entire playlist that you can binge watch a bunch of different content. It'll be in the description of the video. I've done live shows. I've done content me complaining about waiting for a trailer for this season. I've done a reading vlog for this book, so check that out. I'm going to try to not go too in-depth on my reaction and my thoughts for the show as I binge because I have a live show coming up on May 20th right here on my channel. So if you want want to talk Bridgerton after you watch season three and you want to tell me what you rate it one to five stars if you want to debate if you want to uh you know talk about how much you loved it please come and join us on May 20th we're doing a live it's me and a couple of friends and also a youtuber hmm? who is it it's not really hard to see who it is if you just go and see the uh thumbnail on the live but yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna brew up some coffee and then press play, and then I will catch with you guys in a few minutes. So many things happen per episode. Okay, right off the bat, I just feel like Colin's apology was not enough of an apology because he never explains why he said what he said. Penelope never pushes him to ask him why he said that. And that's just the rules of a romance. People are just not talking enough. They're not communicating enough. So here we are. I have to say, it looks like there might be a couple of love stories that are happening this season because Francesca is out in society. And I am just now realizing that every opening of a Bridgerton season, somebody is debuting. And I feel like it's been so long since the last season that I kind of forgot that. So we get to see Francesca coming out in society. And Francesca is really uh, interesting to me because she is oh so beautiful and she's this rich Bridgerton girl. She doesn't seem that interested or maybe not as interested to find a husband like everybody else around her seems to be. And she also seems very kind of reserved. And it looks like her and Penelope are kind of striking up this kinship in that way they are both wallflowers in very different ways because Penelope gets very babbly and very awkward and nervous talking with the suitors and then Francesca kind of gets put off with these guys just asking her bombarding her with questions like what do you think about this what do you desire and I can so understand and relate to that because it's like when you're just a little bit more introverted and reserved it takes time for you to warm up and really be open and sometimes vulnerable with people so i really appreciated that scene and i hope we continue to see more scenes with francesca and penelope because like i said they they are both out in society this is penelope's third season um but they are in similar positions but also in different ways so i really like that and then we get to see penelope who seems like she is fed up with living with her mama and her sisters and i kind of really feel for her because she tells francesca that you know you're lucky that you have the family that you have and my heart kind of breaks a little bit for penelope she just feels like she's very much alone and isolated because She's living this whole other double life as Lady Whistledown. 
and then she also doesn't feel like she has a family that really has her back and she wants to finally escape them and that's why we see her do a glow up with a new hairdo new dresses so that she can hopefully find a suitor and colin is gonna help her i do love that trope in romance books but also in movies and tv shows when someone helps somebody else it's like the teach me trope because typically usually when that person is helping this person with flirting and dating and all that they end up falling for each other and obviously we know that is the thing that is going to happen i'm hoping maybe we'll even get a a scene where there's like a kissing lesson scene but i am also most looking forward to some jealousy scenes for when penelope finally does attract um some male attention oh my god that reminds me we do see this guy i forgot his name but after penelope does her glow up and she's wearing like that emerald dress she does catch the attention of that dude who's blonde has a beard and she is so surprised that she kind of like fumbles it up and girl i i was just like why are you dropping the ball <laughs> I I kind of want to see some more interactions with him and Penelope just because I feel like I still feel like you know Colin doesn't really deserve her. I don't know. I I feel like they need to make me feel like Colin and Penelope belong together and that it makes sense for them because because she forgives him so quickly, I still feel like she is putting him up in that pedestal and she kind of has like those rose-colored glasses she's still kind of like obsessed in that way it's like this long-term crush somebody she has really liked for decades and he still just like doesn't see her in that way i just i'm not i'm not his biggest fan there is an interesting setup with a friendship between cressida and eloise we still see this bitch cressida being a full-on bully to penelope and i hated that scene and but we get to see an admission from Cressida saying, yeah, you know, it was hard for me to find a husband. It's hard for me to make friends because I'm a bitch. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you'll, yeah, it's good to know that you know your problem. Now fix it, stop being an asshole and just be a girl's girl. So I'm hoping for the rest of the season, she'll be, you know, less of a bully and less of an asshole. Because girl, maybe that's why it's been so hard for you to make friends and meet a guy. Well, okay then, Penelope Dunn got her first kiss. And I will say, it kind of looked like Colin at the end there looked a bit shocked and surprised and kind of longing. Is he thinking, but, but wait, I, that was unexpected. <laughs> okay, this is gonna be kind of like going all over the place because so much happens in one episode and I gotta try to download it and remember everything. Before I get more into it, I want, I want to remind you guys that I'm going to go more in depth with some friends during a live show on this channel on May 20th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So if you want to dive in and continue to chat Bridgerton some more, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell because the bell is very important to make sure that it notifies you when we go live. You don't want to miss it. Okay, I literally laughed out loud when um, Lady Featherington realizes that one of her daughters actually has never slept with her husband. And she looks properly exasperated. And then she looks up and says, why must I be so punished? <laughs> the actress who plays Lady Featherington is, is great because she has to handle like a range of emotions. She has to be kind of, kind of a little bit horrible, but also fierce and ambitious and funny. And sometimes she is sympathetic because she is so fiercely protective of her family she's doing whatever she needs to to secure the security for her family but she can also be just kind of cruel to especially her daughter penelope saying girl be reasonable look you're in your third year out you're not gonna find a husband like she's being just brutally realistic in her mind instead of trying to help and encourage her daughter and then she is so funny when she realizes these girls her daughters who are married are just completely hopeless do not realize what sex is <laughs> that made me laugh out loud um i think in the opening of this episode we are seeing colin partake in a threesome 
at first it was an overhead shot and i thought it was benedict just being benedict but i was like oh damn okay it's still calling um i was like well i guess he's still a single man so he's gonna make it do what it do and he still just doesn't see penelope in that way and i think throughout much of this episode we are still seeing the hearts and the eyes of penelope she's still looking very lovingly and longly at colin look i'm just the type of romance lover who i just heard the ice machine i'm the kind of romance watcher and romance reader that prefers when the guy is more into her than she is to him or he is there before she is i just think it makes a romance better in my opinion i like he falls first well so far with this episode like i said we're still seeing the hearts in penelope's eyes so i just don't really prefer that i'm just like kind of like waiting for the magic to happen so that he can wake up and smell the flowers which he is starting to kind of wake up we do see that towards the end of this episode when when he when we see his reaction after that kiss i have to say i am very intrigued by francesca's storyline here so we kind of see danbury helping uh helping francesca out by making the queen see her as this new sparkling diamond which i'm here for because Francesca is very interesting. She makes it clear that she does want to find a husband. She wants to get married, but she doesn't seem like she's too interested in making a big show of it. She is wanting, she just, and that just feels a lot more, I don't know, that is really resonating with me. Eloise and Penelope are still not talking, but it's very clear that Eloise still has some affection towards Penelope because she doesn't want to see Penelope be hurt, which is interesting because they had a huge blowout, a friendship breakup last season. And I don't know, it's just, it's kind of like a chaotic sort of toxic situation there because you guys fell out you don't want to see her being bullied. You want to see her happy. So it's just like, why just not? I mean, might as well just mend the friendship at that point. All right, episode three is next. What a tangle web we weave. This entire episode takes place in this ball. And I feel like there are so many different kinds of love connections that it is a web. It is a web. We see Violet Bridgerton making the eyes with <gasps> shocker Lady Danbury's brother. And if you saw Queen Charlotte, you know that, you know, Violet has been feeling like she needs her garden to be watered. So I am rooting for her to get plowed because it's been a long time, right? Since Mr. Bridgerton or Viscount Bridgerton has passed. So I hope Violet gets it on. And then we see a bit of a tug of war with uh, Deblin, Lord Deblin. Is that how we say it? I don't know. And Penelope and Cressida. I think the show does a good job of making me feel for all of these people. Because even though Cressida has been horrible, she's been a bully, she lashes out because she is also under a lot of pressure from her family to marry well because they are in dire need. And she still hasn't, she's been out for a couple of seasons and she still also doesn't have a husband. So she's feeling, she's circling the drain. She's feeling a lot of pressure. So she needs to find someone She's even asking Eloise for some help so that she could pretend she, to have the same interest as vegetarian uh, Deblin. But Penelope is also gaining the attention of Lord Deblin, and he seems like a really nice man. He is kind, he cares about animals, he likes being outside, he finds it refreshing when people are being honest and being themselves and being authentic. And I really, really love the fact that Penelope is gaining that attention because, you know, that's, it's what you want to see a character like that go through. You know, she's been pining and pining for decades now after this guy who has not noticed her up until very, very recently. Even though we know how it's gonna go, I am, I'm, I'm here for, I'm kind of rooting for everyone's happily ever after, to be honest. And then we also see Francesca gaining the attention of some random dude who was happy to be outside with her standing next to her in the quiet randomly no, no idea what's going there so what we see in lord deblin penelope and cressida is that they all 
feel like they don't fit in in their foundation in their family you know for penelope she has a very kind of unsupportive family family has kind of like given up on her and her happiness and they kind of just like don't really think about it and then Cressida, as I said, is under a lot of pressure from her family. And then Lord Devlin also explained how, you know, he was kind of like the outcast in his family. So I think the the theme for this season are about people who feel different, who don't want to forge the path that everyone else did. They want to forge their own. But what that means is that it's going to be hard. Maybe you'll experience some embarrassment. Maybe sometimes you'll experience some scandal. Um, you could also experience some heartbreak, which I kind of felt for Cressida. She she looked really sad at the party when she saw that Dublin is giving the attention to Penelope. I, I, I'm of two minds about it. I like the Penelope is getting the attention, but I also feel for Cressida because she just... She's got the weight of the world on her shoulders and she just looked really kind of like defeated. So hopefully she finds somebody. I want everyone to find a person. That is the softy in me, I guess. And then we finally get to see Colin. Sorry, I moved my camera. We are seeing Colin feeling some type of way towards Penelope. Um, after that kiss, obviously he has been looking at her differently and he feels a different kind of way towards her. I do like seeing that happen. And I like the conversation that he had with his mom asking her for advice on, on love. And she said something really interesting saying that to start as friends and to have both parties feel the same way is a very, very rare thing. And what your dad is, he had the courage to ask me to see if the feelings were reciprocated. So we see Colin about to ask Penelope something. And she looks very like, I was confused at the acting here because she looks kind of like worried or like, what what's the matter? What's wrong? But why would she kind of feel that way if she already thinks that Colin maybe doesn't feel that way about her? I don't know. I do like seeing him, you know, having his mind changed about Penelope, obviously. I think I still just don't really feel the level of spooniness and heat like I did for the first season. And you know what? I, I think that's something that was like a one-time thing for me that I just still feel like the chemistry being off the charts and the presence hasn't really been back ever since the first season with Reggie Jean Page as the Duke and the steam and the heat and the passion of that. But, you know, it's, it's fine. It's fine so far. I am not hating it. I am not overly in love with it. Um, and I usually do rate the seasons from one to five stars but this one will be kind of hard and interesting because i feel like i can't really properly rate this until we see part two a month from now but i will still rate it for part one but just letting you know that my rating overall will most likely may change when i see part one and part two and i will talk more about what i'm going to rate this at the live show on may 20th so make sure you subscribe for that so without further ado let's watch the last episode well, alrighty then. We had a uh, pretty long-winded, hot carriage scene. I think what's not fully working with me is the look on this actor's face. I think Luke Newton. I think there's two Lukes. I may be getting this wrong. Listen, I love Nicola. She's fantastic. She is the star in my eyes. The actor who plays Colin, meh. It's like a, like a wet towel somewhere. Okay. Um, I did not realize that Lord Deblin was supposed to be gone for three years and he was just supposed to find a wife that would be okay with that. I mean, I guess in their society, it shouldn't be too hard to find because the love matches are rare and the marriages are mostly like transactional business proposals. So, uh, I guess that's something that was just going to be okay with him. You know, Deblin, I kind of feel for him because... He finds out that the girl he was going to propose to actually has feelings elsewhere. I'm hoping wherever he fucks off to, he finds some girl who loves nature just like he does and he can find somebody to travel with if he wants that company with him. I am just amazingly feel... Am I neutral about this? Maybe because I have to watch the other four episodes. I don't 
feel strongly attached to this pollen ship. But I know I'm going to continue watching just so I could continue seeing the story play out. I don't know, it's, it's not bringing out the same kind of passion within me. And I'm not sure what that's about. Maybe it is what I said earlier and it's just kind of like the performance of the of the male character who plays Colin, the male actor that plays Colin. They immediately show us previews for what we're going to watch in a month and they're going to announce their engagement. And then this pisses off Eloise, which I can fully understand her point of view on that. I mean, her and Penelope aren't exactly friends anymore. And she, even during that riff, she still showed compassion towards Penelope she even said you know I don't want to see her unhappy I want to see her have at least one friend and I really hope that she does find a husband because I know that's what she really wants but girl you're coming after my brother when you you know you're you're you have this big secret you're whistled down and he does not know that and he should probably know who he is about to marry so I can understand Eloise's point of view there it looks like there's going to be an award given for whoever discovers who Whistledown is and that Cressida is being put in the position I think this does happen in the book as well I'm not sure because I DNF'd it by the way I do have a reading vlog of me reading Romancing Mr. Mr. Bridgerton in my channel in the in the Bridgerton playlist I mean I, I feel like I can't really give any more thoughts of than that because we haven't seen the other four episodes and we have to wait a month <laughs> which is not annoying at all i think for me maybe i also would have seen just a bit more coming from colin because after we see the kiss happen we do see that he is starting to have dreams about her he's wondering about her he's like but you know she's my friend but you know i'm starting to feel more he had a talk with his mom but he and Penelope don't really have much interaction after the kiss other than the time that she talks to him when they're pretending to seek out sweets and then that was it really. And I think I want to, I would have wanted some more interaction between the two of them after the kiss to kind of feel more of that tension because then maybe then I would have felt like I was waiting for that kiss to happen with more bated breath perhaps. I would have wanted more interaction for sure. The, the the one interaction and the talks with his mom and him just looking at her and looking at her and him trying to distract himself with threesomes didn't fully do it for me. But I will talk more in depth about this and I cannot wait to hear my friends thoughts about this during the live show on May 20th. And I really wanna hear from you guys too. How do you guys feel about the first season? Let me know down in the comments and please join us in the live show. It should be a very lively conversation. I'm very curious to know everyone's thoughts on all of the other love stories that are happening because there is something going on with benedict stuff going on with violet stuff going on with francesca and of course with penelope and colin and i don't know if i miss anybody else's love story i will catch you guys then thank you guys so much for watching please give a big thumbs up in this video if you like this content it really helps to push out the visibility i really want to grow the community and i'll catch you guys next time mm -hmm.